changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. It's Motivational Monday, and that's the day that we get to discuss a positive, inspiring story that will help you get the best from today and every day. It's my privilege as author, editor-in-chief, and publisher of Chicken Soup for the Soul to introduce you to a lot of very positive people. I find their stories so empowering and uplifting, and they make a big difference in my perspective on life. I love what we do with these stories because storytelling really does bring lessons to life. And today's story is about just that, life and what one woman learned when she was told that she had one year to live. She gave away her possessions, and she focused on what she truly cared about. Esther Griffin tells us what happened in her story called A Year to Live, which we published in our book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, From Lemons to Lemonade. First of all, Esther was feeling just fine. She was only in her mid-50s, but she strained her back at work when she had to move an old, heavy wooden desk for the phone guy. He wouldn't move it, so she did it all by herself, and she felt the pain immediately. She was bedridden for days, and then she finally hobbled to her car and went to the doctor and had an x-ray. The doctor reported that her back would heal by itself, but that the x-ray had revealed a spot on her kidney. And then a CAT scan revealed a cancerous tumor, which Esther had removed, Unfortunately, it was a type of kidney cancer that would not respond to treatment, and the doctor said they couldn't predict whether they got it all or not, meaning that she might only have one year left. They told her to take a cruise and just start enjoying herself. So first, Esther fought back. Remember, she was only in her mid-50s. She says, I wasn't even old enough to collect any of the Social Security I had contributed during all those years working in the school district. But then she decided if she only had one year left, she was going to make the most of it. And she was going to focus on what she cared about. She says, if I had only a year, I was going to make it count. A plea for volunteers at our local zoo appeared in the newspaper. I signed up for the 23-week course to learn all about animals and how to handle them. Then the newsletter from my genealogy society arrived, hand-printed, with genealogy misspelled and a plea for a volunteer editor. I had only a year, but I surely could do better than that, so I became an editor. Well, editing that genealogy newsletter made Esther realize that she could write, so she decided to use some of her time in her last year of life to write, and she sold a few pieces. She gave away her possessions, her art supplies, and she waited to die. But while she was waiting to die in her last year of life, she continued doing these new things that she had a passion for, making every day count. When the year ended and Esther was still around, she decided that she would take advantage of her reprieve and she would keep doing all the things that she wanted to do, all of those things on her bucket list. After all, she didn't know how much more time she might have. So she did everything she had ever wanted to do. She took Spanish, she took Russian, she taught night school courses in genealogy and family history, and she spent as much time as she could with her young grandchildren, who she didn't expect to see grow up. Well, now Esther, who was in her mid-50s, is in her 80s. Having seen all 10 of her grandchildren grow up, she has four great-grandchildren now, too, and she's been a zoo volunteer for more than 25 years She's the editor of the local historical society newsletter, and she's had several articles published and a couple of children's books. She reports that she continues to live every year as if it's her last, and that strategy has been working very well for all 25 of her last years. Albert Einstein said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, The other is as though everything is a miracle. Esther's approach sounds like a good way for all of us to live, one miraculous year after another. So that's today's life lesson about making the most of every single one of your last years. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about something else you can do to make every day count. And it's an idea you can share with your family as well. 
I'm Amy Newmark. Thank you for listening to the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast today. I'd love it if you would help spread the word about the podcast to your friends. You can rate and review it as well on our iTunes page. And if you'd like to read more stories and life tips from the book I mentioned, Chicken Soup for the Soul from Lemon to Lemonade, go to our website, chickensoup.com.